Have you ever dreamt of simply doing this to your camera? And have a $15,000 couch appear just behind of you? Well, that's not possible. But what is possible is remaking exactly the same couch spending $1,500. What? That still sounds like a lot. Spending $150. Okay, I did spend $179. But 150 sounds better, so that's what I'm gonna put on the cover. And the best part of this tutorial is that I'm gonna show you how to make this couch with basically zero mathematical calculations, no serious equipment, and actually no carpentry skills at all. Because this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skills, and I'm sharing you my skills. You got, got, okay, we're gonna talk about it later. Let's start. We are at the wood store, and trying to picture wood. This one is the one that I'm dreaming to get, but it costs so much money three times this one ask at the wood store to cut the wood for you i'm gonna put you the measurements now screenshot them but in case you want to be brave and just face circular saw or a jigsaw whatever you have at home i'm gonna also go through that step and cut it with you take out your measure tape and let's start marking on the wood the dimension that we need we're gonna need two meter thirty on the top and instead the height is gonna be one meter here is a video of me cutting the top line here is a video of me cutting the height. And here is one of me finding out that you can totally use this equipment for beauty treatments. Let's go and mark the measurements for the back of our couch. And that is 2 meters and the height is going to be 80. Cut away everything and now we're ready to go and make the legs. When you're working with smaller pieces of wood, it's important to put something heavy on top so to counterbalance it. And now, let's have an honest talk. The original one has only one leg of 95 and the sides are held by the sides itself. But because we bought the cheap wood, this is not going to be enough. So I'm adding here two legs for balance and for stability and it's 65 so you can see them from the front. Go ahead and cut away all your legs and guys, reminder, you do not need to do this. If you don't want to cut, just go to the store, ask them for the specific measurements, and you're ready to go. We have all the pieces behind of us, the sides, the back, the legs, the base, everything, and this baby works exactly like a puzzle. I'm pretty sure that a real carpenter would go and tell you to first sand it, then stain it, and then assemble it. But um, we all know that I'm not really <sighs> precise. I'm not a carpenter! And if you're watching, nor are you! So I'm gonna show you how to make the process backwards and cancel every embarrassing mistake. Basically what we're gonna do is assemble every piece together, check that it's at the same exact connection and height. If it's not, we're gonna sand a little bit the edges so that they match perfectly, and only at that moment we're gonna stain everything. It's gonna look perfect. I'm specialized in dummy proof tutorials. First components are the side and the back of our couch. Once you got them aligned how you want them to be, just position them perfectly corner on corner and take out your driller. You're gonna have to make the holes that fit from one wood all the way inside the second one. I'd love to take credit for this weird instrument, but if I do something right, it's always because one of you guys give me some awesome suggestions. This thing makes so that the holes have a little extra hole for the head of your screw. And this way it's gonna disappear inside your wood and it's gonna become super perfect. Now, this is not a mandatory, you don't need to buy it, but it is extremely cheap. Keep adding holes and screws through all the back line of your couch and you're ready and set to add the legs. We're adding now the final leg and uh, as you can see in the drawing over here, um, it's not positioned at the end, it's not positioned even at the end of the pillows, it's positioned a little bit before that. So if my pillows finish at two meters, I'm gonna go and put this one at 190, 195. Let's see how it looks. Simply measure where you wanna go and position your leg, and once you've found the perfect spot, start drilling from the back the placement of your legs. You're gonna do first the holes on the back side and only later on your leg, connecting the two pieces together. In this way, you're sure that it's gonna be exactly the same height. You just go in with your screws, connect them as strong as possible, and you're done. Now this is a little bit boring, so I'm just gonna use magic, and we're gonna attach the other two legs inside. Doo Let's add the base. Yeah! Ah, this is so good! Yeah! Yes! I'm so happy! <sighs> because there is no like over here telling this to stay at 30 centimeters, this part of the wood is gonna tend to go down. That's why on this side I made a mark at 30 centimeters plus half centimeters, so 30.5. So then I'm gonna come out from the other side and then catch it at the height where I want it to stay. 
There's so much sun! In the same exact way that we did with the legs, we're first gonna make all the holes on the line of the vertical wood, and then after, we're gonna pull towards the hole the entireness of the wood. So you see, as I was telling you, now the wood doesn't finish where it's a 30 centimeters, but gravity's bringing him down. So we're gonna have to hold it up at the height where we want the hole to be. This is the moment where I prove you why you should have not sanded it in advance. Here, there is a teeny tiny bit of overlapping, like there's a bit of volume. Sanding it now after it's assembled means that we're not gonna make the work twice, and especially it's gonna make it so smooth and nice as if we were professional, which we are not. Wood filler. Before we even start with the sanding, it's important to take out your wood filler and fill up all the holes that we have on your wood. In this way, we're gonna hide all the nails and all the little scratches that we made, and it's gonna look perfect at the end. You can totally do this step by hand, but um, I'm gonna use this, it's gonna go faster, but no, you do not need a sander. You can get just sanding paper. It's gonna be good enough. Are you ready for this? Sanding your entire base inside is gonna require some effort, so don't waste your time. Use it to make some squats and your workout routine. Two things at the same time. Look at the magic of sanding. This is literally gonna disappear. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I understood the assignment. Passing now to a thinner grid and we're gonna go and get rid of all this stainy, ugly spots. The result after passing the sander is just astonishing. Let's take a moment to thank all my Patreon subscribers. Thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. Correct. I did open a Patreon account and you can totally join it to have shoutouts during my video, behind the scenes, participate in polls, and also one-on-one -on -one calls where to discuss design and DIY projects. Mask. Time to stain your entire couch. I chose a color that was not too dark, but still very warm. And I ended up giving it two layers on the entireness of the wood. At the end, I also did the bottom of it. And I guess you want to know what happens here where we put the wood filler. And that's the coolest thing. It's going to disappear. Give it two layers of paint and you're done with the wood. There is so much sun, I can't keep my eyes open, but it's day number two. I flipped it upside down so to paint also the bottom. I wanted to make sure that it's gonna look the same color from every possible angle. And now it's passed to the pillows. Where, where did I put the phone? There it is. Before we even start with the reapostling section of this tutorial, it's time to address the elephant in the room. You guys think I'm a terrible seamstress. And I agree with you. That's why I'm so thankful for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare offers thousands of classes online where you can learn more about your creativity. This means you have graphic, DIY, illustration, video editing, and even sewing. I just finished quick and dirty sewing from Miranda Harper and the results on my couch that you're gonna see later are incredible. Learning is so much easier and so much fun when you can do it at your own pace with short classes and especially ads free. Sign up now with the link down below because the first 1,000 of you are gonna have one month free trials. Let's make better couches. <laughs> this baby over here is long two meters and it's high only one and the thickness is five centimeters. What we actually want is to have a 10 centimeter thick but for some reason my foam dealer I guess that's a word my foam dealer didn't have it and I just got two of five centimeters to put one on top of each other and it's gonna make our 10 centimeters you can get the right one in the links down below both if you buy the five centimeters or the 10 centimeters you're gonna have to cut the foam in two because we need two pillows of one meter each go and cut it in the middle and once you're done Take out the spray glue. We're gonna have to apply it both on the bottom and on the top of the foam. Let it dry for a few seconds. And then you go back to place it one on top of the other. Put something heavy on top to make it dry. And if you don't have something heavy, but you have a double hornia like I do, that's a great moment to make your exercises. See doctor, I'm doing it. Back pillows. Time to make the pillows from the back. And how I promised you, there's gonna be no math at all. We're just gonna calculate with our phone 37.5 every time how much distance we're gonna do. So do that four times, 37.5 and then 37.5 and 37.5 and just draw your lines. Cut it away. And you have four of them. Now shake your spray glue and do exactly the same thing also for these pillows. First we do top and bottom, wait a few seconds, put one on top of each other and then something heavy on top. Konnichiwa. 
I was trying to tie my hair tighter with my little elastic, but it flew away and now I don't know where it is. I can't tie my hair and it's so dirty that it doesn't even move anymore. So we're gonna continue the video like this. Sewing is personally my scariest DIY skill. And that's why I decided to make also this without a lot of capabilities or calculations or drawings. We're gonna simply place the fabric on top of the pillow and start pinning it there where we want the sewing to be. You see it? You just have to follow this line straight without any drawing, directly pinning it on the pillow. Once you have the perfect shape done, you're gonna do the same exact thing. Oh, so on the other side. Take out your pillow extremely delicately without breaking any of the nails. I was super sure that I was done with the frame of my couch, but my friend sent me this message. I'm gonna show it better here. Her message was about her closet, but it just sent me into a loop. What if it's gonna happen to my couch? What if it's gonna break? What if the wood can't hold? Is it enough to pray for this? I decided the only way to get out of this depression was to add reinforcement to every single leg and that's exactly what I did. I got extra 2x2s, two made holes, stick them on the bottom so that the legs cannot fold on each other, put it also on the side and this gave me so much peace of mind. Let's go back to the pillows. And yes, I did find my elastic again. We were saying that our box is only composed by straight lines. Go straight and you're basically done with the entire cover. Flip it upside down. Ah, it's so clean! And you're magically gonna end up with straight lines that create a cube. Actually, it's a rectangle, but okay. Add a zipper to the only section that we left open, just pinning it on both two edges and always checking that the two ends of the zipper can close on each other. And then sew it all straight. We have the perfect below box. And now we are gonna go and cover our naked babies. With this. Put your pillow inside. Oh my god, this is... It's perfect. Look at this! I am never speechless. Let's go and do exactly the same thing also for the bigger squares. So the sitting pillows, pin everything on the sides, pin everything on the bottom, and then sew it and flip it around. I just don't understand how my terrible sewing skills are able to do such a perfect corner. I hope you see it. Wait, 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 there. Such a perfect corner without making any weird measurement. Just literally sewing it on the pillow itself. Last but not least, we have the roundy pillow to put on the side. And guys, we use exactly the same technique. We just wrap the fabric around the pillow, put the pins, create a little square on the front that we're going to pin all around so that it create a circle, take it outside, stitch it, add a zipper. Super simple. Have your own Britney moment. And go ahead and add some Velcro strips on the bottom of your couch. You're going to do it with the stickery side directly on the wood. Stay there. Open the sticker, place it on the wood, and we're gonna put two strips per every pillow. Oh my God, this is actually very comfortable. One on the sticker for the top pillow. Somebody explain me why I didn't do it standing from here. And stick the opposite line on the pillow. I did forget recording myself while doing it. The couch is done. You can see it behind me. You cannot see it behind me. And I cannot wait to show it to you. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Leave me down below comments of what you want me to try next. And see you next Monday.